Hello! So, today I wanted to talk about something important. Something that's been talked about everywhere and has been relevant for the past 100 years. Yes, you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about abortion. Now, before I begin, I just uh, wanted to say that this topic, you know, for me personally, is um, an important one. Because when you are in a situation where you had this topic that's been happening around you, you know, like people you know or may not know, had been performing um, illegal abortions, or some who are prosecuted, because in some areas, abortion is illegal. You just ask yourself, why is this happening to them, and uh, why are they doing it? Now, just a disclaimer, what I wanted to talk about here is not about the political aspect of the uh, abortion argument, because you know, some countries had their own laws that they abide by, and it's their country, so they do what they want. Rather, what I wanted to focus here are more on the uh, ethical and uh, moral reasoning behind the uh, abortion argument. And in order to establish a concrete understanding of what are the ethical and uh, moral reasoning behind the, the abortion argument, I wanted to use Jarvis Thompson's right-based argument about abortion. Now, so what I wanted to do is we read to you some of the statements written in Jarvis Thompson's work and then try to interpret and uh, analyze it using the ethical and moral reasoning that I've acquired through my ethics one class. So, let's begin. So the rights-based argument about abortion made by Jar Judith Jarvis Thompson was made or published in the fall of 1971. The contents of her thesis mainly focuses on whether a fetus had the right to life and explained on how abortion can be mor morally permissible by means of her thought experiment. This thought experiment of hers first begins with Jarvis explaining a well-established argument. Jarvis Thompson proposes in her thesis how a fetus is a person from the moment of conception, meaning in her argument we can establish that the fetus is entitled a right to life. However, the mother herself which houses the fetus is also entitled a right to her own body. But Jarvis clearly states that the fetus right outweighs that of the mother's right just because of the fact that we are talking about human life and therefore abortion cannot be performed. Then, she proceeds to explain her thought experiment, as I mentioned before, and it goes like this. A famous unconscious violinist has been found to have a fatal kidney ailment, and the Society of Music Lovers has canvassed all the available medical records and found that you alone have the right blood type to help. They have therefore kidnapped you, and last night, the violinist circulatory system was plugged into yours so that your kidney can be used to extract poisons from his blood as well as your own. The director of the hospital now tells you, Look, we're sorry. The Society of Music Lovers did this to you. We would never have permitted it if we had known. But still, they did it and the violinist is now plugged into you. To unplug you would be to kill him, but never mind. It's only for 9 months. But then he will ha have recovered from his ailment and can safely be unplugged from you. So, um, on the thought experiment given by Jarvis Thompson, it could be established that it is indeed possible to save the unconscious violinist from your body. But the problem here is that you are not given the consent whether or not you agree to this agreement and therefore pose a problem because well for one you as an individual are not exercising your own freedom to decide and two the unconscious violinist did not directly say that he needed his kidney to be attached to your body what i'm saying here is that the violinist capacity 
decide and create reasoning is un unavailable at the moment, which is exceptionally true in the abortion argument. Additionally, Jarvis included a scenario wherein a mother's life is in danger. This, of course, would mean that the fetus' right to life would be in equal terms to that of the mother's life, because both of their life is at stake. However, it was mentioned that the mother's right to her own body would suggest an even greater help for the mother to commit abortion, just because the mother's right now outweighs that of her child. This kind of scenario uses a moral philosophy known as utilitarianism, which is a consequence-based perspective that focuses on the action that produces the more amount of satisfaction for everyone. And in this case, the mother produces more satisfaction just because she in fact had more rights compared to her own unborn child. Uh, secondly, there is also a scenario mentioned wherein the person attached would have to endure a total of 9 years in order for the vileness to survive. This and the other hypothetical scenario wherein a person can only be saved by a hand from a specific individual that's really far away implies that we, as a person, cannot possibly do such lengths for other people we don't know, which is understandable. But try to imagine this. What if you only had to let the violinist stay for just one hour? What if the person whose hand that could miraculously save your life is just in the next room? Does this imply that we as an individual have the duty or responsibility to do it just because of the less number of risks involved? Well, according to Jarvis, if you do allow the person to use your kidneys, it is a kindness on your part and not something that you owe him, which I think is a supererogatory action, which means you as a person goes beyond the call of duty. I also want to note that I think the term Good Samaritanism mentioned in our argument is synonymous to what a supergatory action implies. Just because a Good Samaritan would do an action in the expense of not getting anything in return. This expectation of a Good Samaritan to the people that commit abortion is also one of the topics discussed in Jarvis' work. And I think that this expectation mentioned really posed a, a lot of pressure to the woman who commits abortion and it should be noted that this expectation should not be the basis for committing or for not committing abortion. This is because I also believe that everyone, woman in particular, had their circumstances that they go through and it is up to us to understand how much care they are trying to put up to themselves or to the people around them. Lastly, what I wanted to talk about is her statement regarding a mother's responsibility. It may be said that what is important is not merely the fact that the fetus is a person, but that it is a person for whom the woman has a special kind of responsibility issuing from the fact that she is its mother. It could be said that um, the ontological ethics or duty-based uh, moral philosophy is the ethical or moral philosophy being used in this last scenario, which I think it's true, except in, of course, in cases of rape. Just because I believe that in cases of rape, a woman's decision to abort definitely overwhelms other form of reason that's against her committing abortion. The, and I also wanted to add that uh, deontological ethics uh, in the case of abortion had some problems in it, just because of how much it's putting a somewhat an expectation just like the one I mentioned before the woman to not commit abortion just because of the fact that she had or hold the responsibility to care for the fetus which is I think it's understandable because a good Samaritan is always good however I think that uh, we all had different circumstances and I think that in this case, in other cases, it's a woman's right or it's a woman's right to exercise her own freedom to decide whether to commit it or not.
that's all I could say uh, about Jarvis Thompson's thesis and my analysis of it. I hope that you learned something after watching this video and I hope you had a blessed day. Bye!